For anyone out there who's a Bumble user, you have probably seen this prompt. The world can benefit more from fill in the blank. If I were to answer this, I would put down empathy. Empathy, aka the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Diana and for those of you who don't know, I was born with HIV. Welcome to my channel where my goal is to help those who are positive and educate those who are negative. So if that sounds like your thing, feel free to stick around. In today's video, I'm giving out an HIV disclosure tip where I'm putting a lot of focus on empathy and specifically how it helps you, your partner, and the whole situation in general. The outline of this video is going to look as such. I'm going to go over why empathy to begin with, aka how does it actually help you during the HIV disclosure. Then I'm going to turn the focus to you where I'm going to ask you, are you someone who was born with HIV or did you acquire it later in life? Then we're gonna dive into who is your typical partner where we're gonna do some fun things and build a persona and figure out their pains and gains, if you know what that means. Then I'm gonna go over how it's important to understand that they probably don't know so much about HIV. Then I will end it all with a positive note to give you guys some words of reassurance and calmness based on my own prior experiences. To begin, why empathy at all? To me, empathy is all about feeling close and connected with someone and really having a good understanding understanding of who this person is and where they're coming from. If we take a look at ourselves being HIV positive, this is something so intimate and personal of us if we ever want to share it with a partner, such that we always want to build a little bit of trust and rapport with one another, so we really feel comfortable telling our partner that we're HIV positive. Because it's really nice and appreciated when the partner actually understands just how difficult it must have been for you to be so vulnerable and open with them. Like, yes, thank you. You have no idea how hard it was for me to tell you I'm HIV positive. The thing is, relationships are a two-way street. So just as much as you'd like your partner to make you feel accepted despite your HIV status, you should also do the same for them. What I mean here is if you put yourself in the shoes of your HIV negative partner, I can't even imagine the shock they probably go through. Like, I don't even think they were even considering that you have something like HIV and maybe you're first time intimate with each other and you tell them and you drop the bomb and they're just like, wait, what? Sometimes maybe they don't even believe it because they think you're joking and you're like, yes, no, I actually am HIV positive. It's kind of nice if you understand what they might be going through and what kind of shock they might be experiencing. And I've noticed that because I was empathetic towards my partner, I did try to create as much as a comfortable and safe, secure space or environment for them such that they didn't feel weird or anything. And I think that really helped because if I could build enough trust, if I could build enough empathy, then I think the person was really able to listen to me and understand where I'm coming from. At least from my own experiences, there's never been a guy where they straight up looked up on Google, is HIV U equals U actually a thing? Like, no, they really trusted me blindly and wholeheartedly, which is pretty crazy, actually. Next up, I'm gonna put the attention on you. Yes, you. Specifically, how can you use your situation as an advantage during an HIV disclosure? Were you someone that was diagnosed with HIV later in life, which I'm assuming a lot of you are, or were you someone born with HIV like me? Because surprisingly enough, depending on which situation you're in, there's actually a lot of pros and cons that you can use during an HIV disclosure. For those of you who were diagnosed with HIV, you guys have no idea how much of an upper hand you actually have here because at one point in your life, you actually were HIV negative, aka you really had this unbiased perspective on what is HIV. You really understood the stigma and you understood what kind of education people might have on HIV and AIDS. So you can flip this around and use it to your advantage because if you were still in that position, what could have someone told you who's HIV positive to make you feel okay being with them despite their HIV status? Like, what would you have wanted to hear? How could they explain the situation better to you? What are the phrases and words that would be necessary to make you have felt calm if they told you they were HIV positive? In a weird way, I kind of like to think of this as Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, where he's like, sell me this pen, but instead it's like, tell me why it's okay to be with you even though you're HIV positive. This is the challenge here, you know? And the biggest downside I see here is that maybe you guys can easily psych yourself out because what if you were an HIV negative person who would have never dared to sleep with someone who's HIV positive and now you are HIV positive. So now if you're having to tell HIV negative partners that you're HIV positive, you're thinking, oh shoot, what if they're thinking what I was thinking when I was HIV negative? I think the solution here is just to be aware of this 
fact. And again, same thing applies. What could you tell this HIV negative person to make them feel more calm about this HIV positive situation? Now for someone who was born with HIV, I'm just gonna start off with the downside here. Yeah, exactly. We've never experienced what it's like to be HIV negative. Like we don't know what people think about it because for me, it was kind of quote unquote normal. I was just like fit, healthy, fine. And I was just doing whatever I wanted to do in life anyway. So I didn't really think anything of it. But then I learned that there is a huge stigma around HIV and I was like, great, how am I supposed to tell partners about this? Like, this sucks. And that's where I had to learn empathy from family, doctors, friends, to be like, what should I tell someone for them to feel okay with my HIV status? That being said, this is also our biggest upside because of the concept of ignorance is bliss. We don't actually know what an HIV negative person thinks. So maybe if we treat HIV like we do, where it's like not a big deal and just part of our normal life, that is how it's going to be perceived by our partner. Because I always claim how you present it is how you perceive it. So if you're like calm, cool, collected, that's how your partner is going to perceive it. And at least that's how it worked out for me. So hopefully it does for you too. Okay, so that was first all about you. And now let's dive into your partner, aka who is your partner? Who is the typical person that you'll be disclosing your HIV status to? And I thought it'd be kind of interesting to take a spin on this. So for anyone out there who's an entrepreneur, you probably have heard of this concept of design thinking. And part of the process is building this persona. I do want to say this process is kind of business mind related in the sense the whole point of building a persona is just to understand who your clientele is and who you're trying to sell your product to, which I just want to put it out there that is not my intention here at all i'm not trying to say like how to convince someone to sleep with you despite your hiv status it's just that i have my own experiences with hiv disclosures and then i just happened to learn about design thinking and building a persona and my mind creates weird connections and it was like you know what let's bring the two together but honestly it really does help out a lot and the best way to show this i thought would be to lead by an example so this is my typical quote unquote persona and then I encourage you guys to do the same exercise as well. For me, my guy is most likely German just because I'm in Germany. If not German, then probably European. He is heterosexual. Based on my track record, he is most likely younger than me, aka 24 or 25. I always go for open-minded people and last but not least he probably does not know anything about HIV. As you can see I already know who quote-unquote my type might look like and who I'm going to be explaining my HIV status to. Of course I have higher standards than this but these are just the basics and the reason I chose these attributes is because of the following. The reason I put down nationality is because this already says a lot about the person in the sense what was their upbringing like and more specifically what kind of stigma might they already have. I always lived in either California or Germany, both of which are Western worlds. However, I was considering moving to a country in South America, although I would have been with a partner, I did realize that there is a little bit more discrimination against HIV positive people due to the government. And I was just like thinking, wow, that would be so interesting if I had to look for a potential partner there. Like, how would that have been with the stigma? How would I maneuver that? So I think that is something important for you to think about because maybe if you live in a highly stigmatized society, it's a good idea to start the disclosure with, hey, I know a lot of people think this about HIV in X country, but the reality or the truth is blah, blah, blah. Next up, I put down the sexual orientation because it is indeed a fact that HIV is more prevalent among the homosexual male community, such that I would like to believe people in this subpopulation are more aware and educated of what it means to be HIV positive, how is it transmitted, and how can one actually protect themselves against an HIV infection. For example, in the SF community, they will be taking PrEP just to protect themselves against an infection of HIV. If I'm a heterosexual female, there's not many of us who have it such that our target population of heterosexual guys will probably never have exposure to HIV. So it's just interesting because maybe a homosexual male will be more aware of what it means to be HIV positive, whereas a heterosexual male will probably be like, uh, I don't know anything about it, and they'll just revert back to what they learned at school. Then, of course, I included the age because this can sometimes act as a good indicator for just quote unquote how mature someone is. And there will be indeed a huge difference between someone who is 20 versus someone who is 30. 
Even if you take the same person and tell them about your HIV status when they're 20, they might be more reluctant and be like, oh, oh God, no, I do not want to deal with that. Whereas if you tell them when they're 25, they might be more willing and understanding to listen to what you have to say and they'll just be more open about it. Then I put down, I always like someone who has a lot of open-mindedness, which just pretty much means how willing are they to listen to what you have to say? Because there will be someone who's closed-minded where you tell them, hey, I have HIV, and then immediately they're like, all right, choose, ciao, never want to see you again. And they don't even give you the light of day because they really just don't care about what you have to say. They just hear HIV and run. That only happened to me once, actually. Whereas open-minded people will be like, okay, thanks for telling me. What does that mean exactly? What do you mean you have HIV? Are you okay? Can I get it from you? Of course, not everyone's going to be like that. And maybe you'll get rejected because someone is closed-minded, but then think of HIV as a filter and you don't want those people in your life anyway, especially if you're looking for a life partner. That is not someone you want to be with. So it is a filter and be happy that HIV is then a filter and you only get the good genuine people out of it. Lastly, the fact that partners don't know anything about HIV, I'm gonna get into more detail with that one a little bit later. By the way, we're also supposed to give this persona a name to make it more personable. So I decided to assign the name Jan because I really like this German name. Now, the next step of this design thinking building the persona is to figure out the pains and gains of this person, aka what does Jan want and what is Jan scared of? I split this up into two categories, aka Jan wants to casually date you versus he wants to seriously date you. The reason I did this is because this is where the problem arises, all right? Casually dating while being HIV positive because if you're seriously dating, I really don't think HIV should play ever a vital role. The person should just accept it in my honest opinion. But this is where it's like, oof, could be a little anxiety inducing if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's say that Jan would like to casually date you. And what does he want? Well, he wants to be intimate with you. And what is he scared of? Well, he's scared that HIV may be transmitted to him. That's one thing to think about. And now let's just say that Jan would like to seriously date you and finally give you the kids and family you've always wanted. Well, what does he want here? Same thing, be intimate with you, but now he wants to have kids with you, build a family, and maybe spend the rest of his life with you. So now what he's scared of is, can you pass HIV to our kids? And are you gonna be able to live a long, healthy life just like he can? Which the answer to both is yes, yes you can. Understanding the intentions of the partner can really help with the HIV disclosure because maybe you can better word or phrase what should be mentioned during the disclosure. So if it's just casual, I think all you really need to say and ensure the person is, hey, you really can't catch AIDS from me or you can't get HIV from me. But if it's someone more serious, then it might be better to tell them like, don't worry, I'm fine. I can live a long and healthy life and I won't be able to pass it on to my kids. As a summary to this whole who is your partner aspect, I think it really pays off to kind of read your partner, understand where they come from, what kind of stigma they they might have, what are they worried about, what are their intentions, because this can help you create a better environment for them and just make the disclosure more pain-free and easygoing. At least that's what I've noticed what really helped with me. So hopefully it helps you too. I know we built up this general persona, but please be aware that this might not apply to every single individual. And that's just because no two disclosures will ever be the same because no two people are the same. Just as a heads up. The next thing to consider, it's probably safe to assume that this partner has had no prior exposure to HIV. I'm only speaking from my own personal experience, like literally none of my partners ever knew anything about HIV. So I was always the first one to introduce them to this world of HIV you know the thing is you're HIV positive so your education and knowledge of HIV is up here at least I hope so because otherwise you're making us HIV positive people look really bad so please be educated on the topic and you have to understand that if your partner had no exposure to HIV whatsoever ever before then their knowledge is probably just gonna be what they learned from school which is absolutely terrifying. But please keep this in mind and don't feel offended if they say something like, are you sure I can't catch AIDS from you? I've had that happen to me before and I totally understand because that's what's colloquial. People just say, oh, I don't wanna catch AIDS. No one says, oh, I don't want to get HIV. I think this is just being ignorant or not understanding what it means to be HIV positive. I wanted to end this with a positive note by saying, I am generally just so positively surprised by how understanding my past partners have been. I think the main reason for this is because in my head, I've always painted society to have this extremely horrible stigma against HIV positive people. And of course, if society thinks like this, 
Why wouldn't I think partners think the same way? It wasn't until I put myself out there and just tried to see what partners would say where I actually had a lot of good experiences and people were very understanding and accepting of my HIV status. This is my sign to you that you never know if you don't try and you might just surprise yourself by how understanding a partner may be. With that being said, as always, thank you so much for listening and watching. I really hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Ciao. So here's a little fun fact closer for you guys. Apparently the word empathy was only introduced in 1909 into the English language where it was actually translated from the German word Einfühlung, which means feeling into. I just wanted to share because uh, Deutschland does it again.